recently unboxed these three bags with you guys. These are the Tory Burch Lee Radziwill double bags in the petite, the small, and the regular size, which would be the large size, but they don't call it that. Many people love the look of the Tory Burch Lee Radziwill double bag. And these bags come in three different sizes, all of which are beautiful. But when you don't have them in front of you or you don't have access to a store or you don't want to take the time in the store to really play with them and put your stuff in them to see what fits, it can be difficult to figure out what size is best for you because they're all great. And you don't want to make a mistake when you're buying one of these because they are expensive bags, around the thousand dollar mark for each size. So in this video, I'm going to compare all three sizes. So hopefully you'll get a better sense of what would work best for you. Stay tuned. <music> Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. I promised this video to you. I also promised another one comparing this bag with a few other bags that people compare this bag to or say it looks like. And those are primarily the Fendi Peekaboo and the Hermes Kelly bag. That will be in another video. But today I'm going to compare these three sizes, give you a very, very, very brief history of these bags, tell you some of the characteristics specific to these bags, and related to that, talk about the playability of the leathers, concerns about weight, which a lot of you brought up in my previous video, the features of each size, what do some sizes have that others don't, a very brief what fits, and mod shots. I couldn't find a whole lot of research on these bags online. What I did find told me this. The Tory Burch Lee Radziwill bag is named after Lee Radziwill, younger sister of Jackie Kennedy Onassis and friend of Tory Burch. The design is classy, it's elegant, but it also has elements of being casual. One of which is that these sangles, which just pull apart from, from a magnet, it's supposed to be easier than that, the sangles can just hang like this, like they do on a Birkin or Kelly. The other thing is these bags have these two flaps of leather on the front, and then if you turn it around, it has the same two flaps on the back. And the design inspiration of this is that they're supposed to look like the folds of a trench coat when you're wearing your coat open, or just the flappy collar things. And when these fold down and sag like that, it's reminiscent of the Fendi Peekaboo, which is another bag people compare these to. I love this look. And this is exactly why a lot of other people are drawn to this bag. So those are two of the characteristics that define this bag. In addition to these double bags, there are two other Lee Radziwill bags that I know of from Tory Burch. One is this. This one reminds me more of the Kelly bag, and it comes in a few different sizes. There's also this bag, which looks more like a saddle bag, and I don't see those on the Tory Burch website anymore, but I do remember seeing them in the past few years. Also, based on my research, these bags were introduced on the runway in 2018. So I showed you these two characteristics of the double bag. Let's go through all the other details of this bag up close. This particular bag is an eel skin. They have released these bags in many different leathers and many different colors. So let's start by just giving you a spin of the bag to give you a little overview of what it looks like. It does have four metal feet on the bottom. I love that they're ovals, which mirrors the oval logo right here. And there's a close up of that for you. That has the T of the Tory Burch logo debossed in it. The sides of this bag are suede. Often when the body of the bag is leather, the sides are suede and vice versa. If the body is suede, sometimes the sides are leather. On the back of the bag, you have these two metal pieces that are the other end of the sangles, but they also have this metal hardware. You can attach the crossbody straps there. Here's the crossbody strap for my bag. And let me show you something unique about these snap hooks. They don't have a lever to pull this down. What you do is twist it open, which I've never seen before. Here's how the strap looks attached to those rings and I am holding on to the top handle right now. If I let go of that, you'll see that the bag hangs sideways like that. Not very attractive, not very safe for your stuff, but if you put it up against your body, of course your body 
will hold it upright. So it works like that, but the bag also has these almost rectangular rings here that hold the top handle. So you could certainly attach the shoulder strap like that, and then it hangs perfectly straight, and it looks like this. That's how I will be wearing it. That's how I wore it out when I took it out yesterday. And let me also show you what it looks like if you try to put this handle over your shoulder. You can certainly do it, but it is right up there in the armpit, so that's not how I want to wear it. And unless you're much smaller than I am, you definitely cannot get these straps over your shoulder on the small and petite sizes. You may have noticed there's a key clochette here. Here's how it looks on the other side. And in my unboxing video, which I had linked below, I tried to reach this key around to reach the front of the bag right here, and that does not work. So I'd mentioned in that video that the clochette was purely decorative, even though there is a key inside. And that key is in the shape of a T, just like the T right there. And one of you told me, no, it's not decorative. The key actually fits in there and turns. So I'm trying it right now. Nothing. Here's the key. It does fit in, but it does not turn. If you look at it from this side, you won't be able to see it in this light too well, but there is nothing indicating that that would turn. This is one solid piece, kind of a sideways H. And then in those little openings, there are things that stick up a little bit so that when you push these sangles in, the magnets will catch and there are things that fit into, can you see it? That little hole right there, just to help keep it in place a little better. But there is no locking mechanism. And by the way, that goes through the front flap and it's attached right there on the inside flap, but you don't see it inside the bag. I like the look of the clochette, so I'm going to attach it to one of those rectangular hardware pieces on the side where the top handle is right there. That's what a lot of people do. Let's go over more details on this bag. First of all, this outside piece of leather has a notch right here and right here so that you can see the interior piece of leather and the color of that. One of the things the designers do with these bags is vary up the colors and the textures. So I have eel skin here, this is suede, this is also suede, and then this is a smooth leather. In the small size bag, which is still wrapped up because I'm returning it, you have the smooth leather here, and then suede in a completely different color. This is a piece of cardboard because I'm returning it. There's another piece of suede in a third color, and then a fourth color inside. So you get four different colors and another color on the strap. So they really play with color and texture in these bags, and I think that's another thing that people really love about them. Now these flaps aren't just decorative. This actually is a giant pocket that goes all the way to the bottom, and it's the same thing on the back of the bag. Now if you want a nice open pocket to slip in your cell phone. I wouldn't recommend the front pocket because this thing can get in the way. I would keep mine in my back pocket and then it's also right there up against my body when I'm carrying it. Now besides those front and back slip pockets, what else is inside this bag? Well, it's all this. You have two compartments that are divided by this center zipped compartment. The one in the back here, they're both very big on this bag. The one in the back has this pocket on the back which has a zipper here. And the inside is lined in the same leather as that and the pocket itself. And then behind the pocket, you have a slip pocket. And then this is a nice textile. The bottom and the sides of the bag are both in leather. And in that front compartment, you have no pockets. In the center zipped compartment, which is made of a different textile, it's just open there with the same textile on the inside and outside. One important thing to note, and perhaps my biggest gripe with this bag, actually definitely my biggest gripe with this bag, is that that center divider pocket is not attached at the bottom. In fact, it doesn't even go all the way to the bottom. There's a good inch of space under that pocket for your things to just fall over and slide around back and forth from one compartment to the other. So if you think you put something in the back compartment, you may find it in the front later in the day. I wanna show you one more detail in these bags and then we will look at the other two. And that is these three snaps. These are the backs of the snaps. These snap into those, those are plain looking. These three, however, I hope you'll be able to see the detail. They each have the Tory Burch logo debossed in them, which I think is such a beautiful detail. And the edges of the bags are glazed in addition to being stitched. Now a quick size comparison of the regular size, which doesn't, they don't, they don't say what size it is. They say this is a small and this is a petite, but they don't give a size for this. Medium, large, regular, whatever. I'm gonna call it the regular size. So here's the regular size next to the small size. And you can see the difference isn't all that much. This bag is so floppy. I'm going to hold it by the top here. There they are side to side. I think one of the best ways to compare the size of a bag is to look at the bases. So there is that. Here they are side by side again. And if I was to hold them up to me as if I'm wearing
wearing them with the shoulder strap on. This gives you an idea of what that looks like. Now here's the small and the petite. There is a huge size difference here. The petite is a very small bag. There's the fronts, these sides, and the bases. Oh, I meant to say earlier, one of the things to consider when you're looking for one of these bags, if the floppiness factor of the flaps is important to you, is the pliability of the leather. Again, these are offered in so many different styles and materials and colors. The material and construction really matters. Now, why do I say construction since they're all the same bag? Well, this is why, because they offer woven bags and some other kinds of bags that wouldn't have the same pliability as a single piece of leather. This is what will give you the best flop. Also, the size is going to have an impact on that. The bigger bags are going to have the bigger flops, whereas that will be more difficult to get with the petite size, even if it wasn't this woven leather, because the center is so close to the edges, it just doesn't want to flop down as much. But this woven leather doesn't want to flop down at all. And when I posted the unboxing video, a lot of people brought up the weight of these bags, particularly this largest size. Now, I don't know if it's the materials that mine is made of or something else, but I haven't found this to be heavy. It's not a lightweight bag, but I haven't found it to be particularly heavy. I haven't ever picked it up, even with stuff in it, and thought, oh, that's heavy. It just hasn't happened. But of course, that's all very subjective. If you want a lighter weight bag, of course, the smaller bags will have less leather on them. But keep in mind, if you have woven leather like this, bring it up where you can see it better, that means that you have two pieces of leather everywhere it's woven. So that's double the leather, double the weight, plus you still have all the flaps inside. And while we're looking inside this bag, this is the only one of the three that does not have a zipped compartment. This is just a divider. And on all three, it still is open on the bottom. Can you see my fingers just barely? Where things can slide around. There are two more differences I've seen between the petite size and the small and regular size. One is the petite does not seem to come with a clochette. Now, this bag I purchased pre-loved from the Real Real, so you would think that could be the reason why. But I looked at brand new listings on Tory Burch and other places. I looked at videos of people showing brand new petite size bags and none of them have the clochette. So that leads me to believe they don't come with one, but the small and regular size do. The other difference I see between the petite and the other two is the straps. First of all, the small and regular size strap are both this size, this width, whereas the petite strap is thinner. The other difference is the length of the straps and all these straps are adjustable by the way. On the regular size bag, it's a shoulder strap. You're not going to get this cross body, but on the petite size, it is crossbody, so you can wear it like that. So there's a comparison of those. The strap on the small size bag is also only a shoulder strap. It would not work crossbody. Now a very quick what fits. I'm not going to fill these bags with things and put all the usual stuff. I just wanna show you a couple of things, the sizes of which you'll be familiar with, so you'll have a better idea of the size of the bags. First of all, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I carried this to a bank yesterday with papers, these exact papers, to get some things notarized. And I thought, well, those thin slip pockets on the front and back of my large bag should fit that just fine. And it does. I have these in that back slip pocket there and they stick out just a little bit, but they are pretty much exactly the size of the paper. But of course the bag is wider than that. They would not fit in the small size. I think this would be a fabulous work bag. So I'm curious if my computer will fit. This is a MacBook Air 13 inch. I'm sure it's gonna stick out since the paper stuck out a little bit. It definitely fits, it does stick out some as you can see, but that works. I'd carry it like that. An iPad mini, that will definitely fit in the small size. It will definitely not fit in the petite size. If I stand it up in the petite, it looks like that. An iPhone 10 definitely will fit in the petite size. And if I stand it up, it fits that way too. Another difference between the petite size is this has two card slots and not a pocket and not a zipped pocket. The front compartment is still empty and the petite does still have three snaps. Conclusion, the regular and small sizes are very very, very similar. They're pretty much identical bags. Just one is slightly smaller than the other. The petite has the most differences from the others, but they are all fabulous. So unless you know you're looking for the petite, then you're probably trying to decide between the small and the regular size. And I think that's going to come down to how you're using the bag. Whether you plan to carry files, paperwork, a computer, then you'd have to go with the larger one. If not, if you just want a regular handbag, then the small size should work great for you. No matter your decision, they are all beautiful bags and you have so many options to choose from and the colors and the leathers and the textures. I will link some below that are on sale right now and a few that aren't on sale so you can get an idea of what's out there. As I'm filming this, 
all three of these are available brand new and on sale. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.